for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. July the 1st, 1991. 4th of July, family camp meeting. Being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook at Tulsa, Oklahoma is the speaker of the evening. How many is tired in your body tonight? Raise your hands. How many is sleepy? Raise your hand. Let's take the minion over that right now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's all pray against it. Come on, let's, let's, let's rise up. Lord, we come against all weakness tonight. In the name of Jesus, all sleepiness, Lord. We take dominion and authority over that weak spirit and that sleepy spirit. We command you to loose the people of God in the name of Jesus. Loose their bodies, loose their minds tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let the anointing rest upon their, their body tonight and their mind, Lord God, and their heart to receive, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And, Lord, I thank you for strength. I thank you that the joy of the Lord is their strength tonight, Lord, that they will stay awake, hallelujah, to hear thy word. And everybody said, amen. Let's give the Lord a good clap then before we sit down. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to the book of Revelation tonight. Revelation chapter 2. How many, how many read the book of Revelation? I mean, what's a blessing just to read it? Those that don't read it miss a blessing. Chapter 2. We want to touch on, if the Lord leads us, five areas. Um, well, I'll put it this way. Five evil strategies against the church. Or five things against the church. How do you want to say it? Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. And the Lord speaking to the church. And we know there were strongholds in God's people in the churches. And, you know, you can read the church, seven churches of Revelation and see where the church is today because the same strongholds are in the church today. Isn't that right? But how many know he's given us dominion and authority over the enemy? And we sometimes we just allow the enemy to beat us up. But it's time to switch that. Come on, help me now. Amen. Start seeing him beat up. Amen? And, and destroy. Now, chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord said, I know thy works and tribulation." And poverty, but thou art rich. Let me tell you, not all poverty is wrong. Some poverty is. I mean, no, we don't want to live in poverty. But he said, this poverty here, he said, I know your poverty and your tribulation, but in the midst of it, he said, you're rich. So what I'm saying is, there is a richness in the midst of poverty. That's what I should have said. And he said, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue, come on, of Satan. Now, notice that phrase. There are those who say they are Jews, but they're the synagogue of Satan. Now, turn to Romans 2. Let's go into a teaching here a little on this. Romans 2. Romans chapter 2. And I want to look at verse... I want to look at verse 9. Romans 2... Not 9. Romans 2, um, 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the what? The flesh. But he is a Jew. I mean, no, oh, you are the Jew tonight. The Jew is you, right? But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. I'm glad tonight I've been circumcised in my heart. Can you say amen about yourself? I thank God for the new birth tonight. Praise the Lord. And I thank God we are the Jew tonight. Thank the Lord. But in Revelation, there were those who sang, who were saying they are Jews. And yet the Lord Jesus said they're not Jews. They're the synagogue of Satan. How I many know in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, there was a man there that was overpowered by a demon. Remember that? And it was right in the synagogue. No telling how many... Years the man may have been going, we'd say, to that church, that place of worship. 
But all of a sudden, the demon takes over and controls the man, and the people know nothing what to do, and Jesus walks in and delivers the man. How many know our churches can be are demonized, many of them? Come on now. There are some churches run by the enemy. And even though they may have a Christian name on the outside or something and claim to be Christians, how I many know a lot of the churches, the people are demonized. They need to be set free. They may be true Christians. They may be true Jews. Now, these were Jews who were not Christians here. And so Jesus called them the synagogue of Satan. Now, turn to uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And I want to look at verse 2. And Paul says, Beware the dogs. I mean, there's a dog and hog crowd in the church, too. Beware of evil workers. That's the workers of iniquity. And beware of concision. That's the false circumcision. For we are the circumcision which do something. This proves our circumcision of the heart. Which worship God, come on, in the Spirit. And rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh at all. So he said the true circumcision are those who worship God in the Spirit. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So he said beware of the dogs. Beware of the workers of iniquity. And beware of the false circumcision. Now you know David called the giant one time an uncircumcised Philistine. I mean, all the word Philistines means those who roll in the dirt or the dust. And there is a dust man, isn't there? There is a flesh man, and that giant represents the flesh man. You see 666 written all over him. But thank God, how I many know it took one, one stone out of five to kill him? He had five stones, represent a lot of things, represents faith, represents apostles, prophets, teachers, shepherds, evangelists. It only took one to hit him right in the forehead. And when he fell, he didn't go backward, he fell from her, didn't he? Right to the ground, David cut his head off. I mean, it was time to slay some giants. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, back in Revelation here, we see something uh, as well. Look in chapter 2 in Re of Revelation. And look um, in chapter 3, verse 9. We read this basic same verse in 2, 9. Now, look at 3, 9. Look at 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan... Remember, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I want you to notice that. They're liars. Now, they say they are Jews, and Jesus said they are not Jews. I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they're Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now, look at, look at a scripture in Isaiah 60 with that. Isaiah 60. How I many know we said last night God had a foot company? Look right here and you'll see it in Isaiah 60. And look at verse 13. It said in verse 13, The glory of Lebanon shall come to thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. Now, where's the sanctuary today? It's you and I, isn't it? And I will make the place of my feet, come on, glorious. God's going to have a glorious feet company. Can you say amen? amen? Now, the next verse. The sons also of them that afflicted thee, that afflicted this feet company, shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee. I want you to notice there's affliction against the people of God, and they despise the people of God. Let me know that David's wife one time despised him in her heart, the Bible said. And she's never called the wife of David again, and God shut up her womb, and she could have no children. How I many know there's some locked wombs tonight? Not only individuals, but churches that cannot and will not produce unless they get rid of that despisement in their heart. Come on, help me now. And so it said, The sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Now we know circumcision. There was circumcision uh, in the flesh in the Old Testament. But God talks about it as, as well uh, in the heart. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 30 with me. Deuteronomy 30 in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. And look at verse, chapter 30, verse 5. Deuteronomy 35. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. It's not enough to enter it, or, but you've got to conquer it. You've got to possess 
And he will do the good. How many believe his ops will do us good tonight? And multiply the above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Hallelujah. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. How many want to live tonight? Amen. Glory. Next verse. And the Lord thy God will put up these curses, come on now, upon thine enemies. I'd rather them to have it than me. How about you? All them that hate thee which persecuted thee. So God, he said, he's going to circumcise the heart of his people. Then in Ezekiel 4.4, 4, look at the scripture there with me. Ezekiel 4.4. 4. And it says this, Lie thou also upon thy left side. Is that the right one? Is it? No, it's Jeremiah 4.4. 4. Jeremiah 4.4. 4. Didn't sound right. Jeremiah 4.4. 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. You men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. Man needs a change of heart, doesn't he? Hallelujah. Now, we know circumcision was in the flesh as well in the Old Testament. I mean, know that circumcision took place on the eighth day of the child's birth, uh, after he was born. And eight is the number of new beginnings, come on, and resurrection life. And it also represents a new name being given to the child, which represents a new nature. And I thank God tonight for the divine nature He's put in us. Can you say amen? It speaks, of course, of the cutting away of the flesh. And we know the older that a person was, the more flesh had to be cut away. And it took longer to heal. And how many know some of us have got a lot of flesh? God's still, still got to cut away. But he's got a sharp knife, doesn't he? Hallelujah. And you know the one in the, one of the men who circumcised in Joshua, of course, was Joshua himself. And we know Joshua, actually the word means, actually just like, it's like the word Jesus. And the Lord wants to circumcise our heart anew and afresh. Praise the Lord. And so it said those here in Revelation were those who came in saying they were Jews. And the Lord said they lied. Now turn to Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah 13. And look at the scripture with me here. Praise the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 13. Thank you, Lord. And I mean, if we don't conquer, conquer our enemies, they're going to... They're going to show up down the road somewhere. I'll show you this in just a minute. Now, God's people were told not to marry other, um, other races and other peoples, and they did. And when they did, how many know they usually stole their hearts away from God? And they got in trouble. You read about Solomon. You read about others who did that, and God said, don't do it. We're not to be unequally yoked together. How many believe that? As many, you can go look at that many ways, of course. And I can show you in the Old Testament, God just gave me something, and I wrote it down in this book here, about Jehoshaphat. How many know he was a good king? But you know, he made an affinity in three areas, basically. And it was um, in war with his enemy. And how many know God sent a prophet and prophesied against him because he did it? And then he made, uh, and then because of that, it affected his own family because his son, Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel. I mean, no, we better be careful what we join up with. It may not affect us so much, but it may affect our children. Can you say amen? Or it can destroy us. Amen. And the third thing he made an affinity with, he joined up with another guy called Ahaziah. And it was, it was concerning commercialism, or I mean commerce. And so there were three things God said that this man made an affinity to. It was marriage. It was marriage or matrimony, militarily, and money. Hallelujah. And it was Athaliah, Ahab, and Ahaziah. Praise God. So I won't go into that tonight. But uh, Nehemiah 13. Notice in verse 23. God said, In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and of Moab. They married right into that incest thing, didn't they? And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. Now, this was in the natural. They married, as I said, these other nations, and they couldn't speak their own language. And so today there are many saying, I'm a Jew, but how many know if you're a Jew, you better speak like a Jew? I better speak like a Jew. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A amen. We prove we are a Jew by that which we speak. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. And yet 
not only speak but walk uh, as well. And so there were people intermarrying, and they could not speak the Jewish language. Now go back to Joshua 11, and let's trace this up just a minute. Joshua 11, and I want to show you a verse here. Joshua 11, and I want to look at verse, look at verse 22. It said, There was none of the Anakims of the giants left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza in, and in Ashdod they remained. Now, notice, there were some enemies still, still left in Gaza. That's where Samson went into the harlot. I mean, he lost his purity because of it. Amen? And if we don't destroy an enemy, it'll come up down the road, as I said a while ago, somewhere. The next one was Gath. That's where the giant rose up and defied the armies of the living God until David come and slew him. Amen? And then the third one was Ashdod, and that's where God's people married in here, and they could not speak the Jews' language. Can you say amen? Amen. So we got an enemy in the church, and that's those who are saying, yes, I'm a Jew, but God said it's blasphemy there in Revelation, if you read that. I mean, no, there's different kinds of blasphemy. That was one form of it, saying I'm a Jew, and they were, were not truly Jew. Let me tell you another form of blasphemy. It is bringing God down to man's level. It's another form. There's different kinds, of course. But there were those who sang the Jews, and God said, no, it is blasphemy. Now, look in Psalm 74. Now, God said that they would be the synagogue of Satan, didn't it? In Psalm 74, I want to read a scripture here about the synagogue. And you'll notice in verse 3, the Lord said, Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary. We have something to say what the enemy can do here. How many believe that tonight? Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up, notice, their end signs for signs. The enemy has his signs. That's the only ones we have in many churches. Come on, is the exit sign and the bathroom sign. But how many know these signs shall follow them that what? That believe. Amen. Now notice, he says something. A man was famous according as he hath lifted up axes upon the thick trees. How many know the devil's got a chainsaw? He likes to cut you down. Verse 6, But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers, and they have cast fire. They have cast fire. This is a false anointing, a false fire, a strange fire into the sanctuary. They've defiled by casting down the dwelling place of my name to the ground. Look at verse 8 now. They, he said, They said in their hearts, Let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. Now look at verse 9. We see not our signs. There's no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. Oh God, how long? How many ever said that? God, how long are you going to let this go on? How long are you going to let the enemy beat me up? Amen. Or whatever he's doing. Huh? Well, I'll tell you, God's got an answer right here, doesn't he? Look at it now. Hallelujah. He said, how long, O Lord? That's what he's saying. Now notice, O God, how long shall the adver adver adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand? Even come on thy what? Right hand. Pluck it out of thy bosom. How I many know he's got a right-hand minister he's going to pluck out of his bosom? Come on now. There's a right-hand minister going to stand up in the earth, and you're going to see the enemy coming in and destroying and doing all he's doing until God raises up this man, hallelujah, and brings him out of his bosom. But how I many know when he stands up in the land, the enemy is going to march out? Come on now. Amen? Praise God. I want to see it, don't you? And I want to be part of it. I want to be part of it. I want to see that right-hand minister come forth. Praise God. Where'd he go? Hallelujah. <laughs> I got excited there. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Revelation. Back to Revelation chapter, I think it's chapter 2. But we see in chapter 2, verse 9, chapter 3, verse 9, there are those who are saying they're Jews. Then we come down in the chapter um, to verse 13. And the Lord says something here. I know thy works to the church now, and where thou dwellest. He said, I know where you're dwelling, church. Even where Satan's seat is, or Satan's throne is. 
Now, we say, well, Satan's throne's in Rome and Russia, and that's true. But how many know it's right in the church? He's sitting right among, come on, the congregation of the righteous. He wants to be right among the, the people of God. We saw that there in Psalm 74. He said, I know your works where you dwell, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But how many know we can be deceived in thinking he's not inside the church? Amen? But I guarantee you, he's there tonight in 1991. He's among the people of God as well. Amen? But notice, he's, notice, he's saying it's where Satan's seed is. Now, look in Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Let's look at a few scriptures here together. Revelation 13 and verse 1. Notice. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of humanity, out of the sea, having... Seven heads, ten horns, and upon his crowns, ten crowns, upon his heads, the name of what? Blasphemy. I challenge you. Notice something here. Did you notice that, what it said? Seven heads and how many horns? Ten. Seven and ten is seventeen, isn't it? Now, seventeen is a positive and a negative number. Joseph was seventeen, wasn't he? Back there when he began uh, a lot of his trouble, I guess you'd say. He was seventeen years of age. Now... But there is a positive and there is a negative, but uh, a 17. And I'll tell you, the 17 also represents the depths of Satan coming out against the people of God. And I may, I may touch on that in a minute. But, but look here in this verse now, verse, uh, what, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet like the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power in what else? His seat on and great authority. So the dragon gave him his seat, didn't he? His throne. Then look in chapter 16 of Revelation. Chapter 16 of Revelation, verse 10. Notice what it said. And he, chapter 16, verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial, or his bold judgment, upon the seat of the beast. He's going to get a hot seat, isn't he? Huh? And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Amen. So right in the seat, right in the throne, God's judgment is coming upon the beast. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we go to 2 Thessalonians. One verse there. We touched on it last night. We'll touch on it again tonight. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And look at verse... <clears throat> Hallelujah. Look at verse 4. Who opposeth and exalts himself. This is the beast. The man of sin, above all that's called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. How many know we're the temple of God tonight? And his throne is among the people of God. He's sitting among the congregation of the righteous tonight. Don't shout me down. It's true. Hallelujah. He's among the church of believers tonight, isn't he? Yes, he is. Then we look in um, Esther. Go to Esther. Go to Esther. I know we're looking at a lot of scriptures, but you need a good Bible drill. Praise the Lord. Amen. Esther, chapter 3 and verse 1. Here it speaks of Haman. And you know Haman hated the Jews? So did Hitler and so did Hussein. We've got three H's, don't we? And so right here in chapter 3, verse 1, notice something. And I want to tell you about this man. You see a promotion here. You see pride in chapter 5, and then you see punishment in chapter 7. How many know he's destroyed? And the gallows that he made to destroy Mordecai on, how many know he, he got hung on himself? It was 50 cubits high, and 50 is the, the number of Pentecost, or the anointing, so the Holy Ghost hung him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it also represents the flesh coming into the Pentecostal realm. Are you hearing me? How many know we see that? We said last night, in the holy place there's a counterfeit. Now... In chapter 3, verse 1, After these things did King Ahasuerus promote, notice the word promote, I said he was promoted, there was pride, and there was punishment. Promoted Haman, the son of Hamadetha, the Agagite, boy, what a name, and advanced him and set his seat, notice, above all the princes that were with him. So we can see this pride and we can see this throne sitting above all the others. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, oh, that Agagite, he was kin to that guy that over there that Samuel killed. Remember that? 
That takes you back to that flesh man, the Am Amalekites. Praise the Lord. Then we go to another scripture. Go to, I believe there's one more. I want to look at Matthew 20. Oh, no, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Praise God. Ezekiel 28. And look at verse 2. Verse 2. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, thine heart is lifted up. There's pride. And thou hast said, I am a God. I sit. Come on, help me. In the seat of God, in the midst of humanity, the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So we see the enemies thrown among people, don't we? Amen. Especially among the church. We saw that uh, there in Revelation. Now go back to Revelation. Go back to Revelation and look in chapter 2, or 3, I guess it is. Revelation. Chapter 2, I'm sorry. And look in verse 24. And notice God's addressing the church again of Thyatira. And he's been talking about Jezebel. And we're not going to preach on Jezebel because we brought, we've preached several messages on her here at Lake Hamilton. But look at verse 24. But unto you I say that, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine or teaching, which have not known the depths of what? Of Satan. As they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So, we have another enemy. The depth of Satan, which is the doctrine of Jezebel and her teachings. Amen. But how many know there's a lot of other things? Now, in Revelation 9, turn to chapter 9, and look in verse 1. It said here that the fifth angel sounds, and a key... Uh, was given to this fallen, this star that fell from heaven. How many know it's not a natural star? Because it's called a hymn. Amen? It's called a hymn here. So this, this being that fell from heaven, he was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, out of the bottomless pit comes the depths of hell, or the depths of Satan. Amen? And in verse 2, notice, he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit. Now turn to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. We see something right here. The two witnesses die in the streets. Let me see the verse. Let me find the verse here. Verse, uh, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony. How many want to finish a testimony tonight? I want to finish mine. Whether we attain to these or not, I want to finish mine. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war, come on, against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And so the depths of Satan is allowed to come out of this pit and destroy these people at this time. Amen. But they cannot until they finish the testimony. Praise God. And I don't want the enemy to take me out until I, I, I don't want to go rather put it this way, and uh, until God lets me finish my testimony. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, turn to Romans 8. Turn to Romans 8. In chapter 8, verse 30. Five. Now, notice, I want to show you 17 things right here. And notice what it said. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Count them now. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. Then in verse 38, I am persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor what else? Depths of Satan. Amen? Nor any other creature can, shall be able to separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. How many you count? Seventeen. Seventeen there. Hallelujah. Seventeen things. And so it represents the, the, the depth of the enemy. Now, seventeen speaks of the depths of Satan which surge forth in great powerful ways against God and His purposes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, turn to Psalms 83. Psalms 83. And I want to show you some enemies here. And there's about 17 in this chapter. But we'll never cover them all. We'll touch on a few. Psalms 17. Sorry, 83. Doctor, you're not the one who makes mistakes. <laughs> Psalms 83. 
Now look at this verse. Verses. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up something. The head. That's pride. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, now notice what they say, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, and they are a confederate against thee. Everybody see that? There's a confederacy against God and His people. And did you notice the first one? It's Edom. I mean, oh, Edom, the word is, is, well, Edom means red. And you take it from another word, uh, Adam, A-D-O-M, is red, rose, or ruddy. Then you trace it back to Adam, which means to show blood in the face, or flush, or ruddy, or rosy, or dyed red. But how many know that Esau also means Edom? Amen? Amen. And so Esau, studying his lifestyle, takes you back to Adam, to that dust man, that first dust man. First Corinthians 15 calls him the dust man. Now, how many know that uh, God said to the serpent, On your belly shall you go and eat dust. Remember that? And we know he went from a serpent to a dragon in Revelation. From Genesis to Revela Revelation, he went from a serpent to a dragon. The dragon's used 17 times in Revelation. But he went from a skinny serpent to a big fat dragon, didn't he? Now, there is a spirit called Diabolos for the devil. The name devil. How many know it means slanderer or accuser? And when we move in slandering and accusing, how many know that, you know what we're doing? We're feeding the enemy a sandwich. We're feeding him a sandwich. It's time to starve that sucker out. Amen? Hallelujah. It's time to quit yielding to that old Adamic nature. Come on now. And feeding him what he wants. Can you say amen? Now, Edom represents those who give, listen, who give up their inheritance in order to satisfy the flesh. I mean, old that Esau despised his birthright. Isn't that right? You know, I don't have to tell you a story. You know that. He despised his birthright. Now, look in uh, Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. And I want to look at verse 18. Numbers 20, 18. Thank you, Jesus. Numbers 20, 18. Notice what it says here. And Edom said to him, speaking of Israel, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said to him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, uh, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand, Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. So Edom represents the fleshly carnal nature of man, which stands in the way of the people of God attaining their inheritance. Stands in the way of your inheritance. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, how many know Esau did something? He allowed a root of bitterness to come in. Oh, yes, he did. He hated Israel. He allowed a root of bitterness to come in, and it germinated. It sprang up, didn't it? Hallelujah. And bitterness defiles many, especially his descendants. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see the Edomites are in a confederation against God and God's plan. Praise God. And I'll tell you, brethren, the root of bitterness is found tonight in the or, or it's found in the depths of Satan himself. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. It is a per personification of a malignant bitterness uh, that that speaks um, that was in Esau. It was in Satan. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something. This bitterness will hit you hard in the time of tribulation, distress, and persecution, and things you go through. How I many has ever had to fight that? Come on, raise your hands. I have too. Sure. But how many know we've got to slay, we've got to slay that flesh man with the cross. Hallelujah. And we've got to slay that bitterness. We've got to take it, come on, to the cross. Amen. You and I do. Praise the Lord. Now, notice that 
in Genesis 36. Let's go there. Genesis 36. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 36. Look at verse 8. And God says here in verse 8, and before I, before I do that, look in verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughter of who? Canaan. And God strictly said, don't take the Canaanites for wives. Amen? And so there's a mixture here. He married into the heathen nations. There's rebellion in this one. And he marries into the Canaanite nation. Now look in verse 8. He said, Thus dwelt Esau on Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Then if you look in verse 12, you see the grandson of Esau was Amalek. I mean, oh, the next enemy that we're going to deal with in that confederacy, confederacy is Amalek. Or one of the enemies. I'll put it that way. Look in Obadiah. Look in Obadiah. Oh, let's go to Malachi first. Malachi. Malachi. Malachi chapter 1. And it said, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, but you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated... Come on. God hates the flesh man. Come on, help me. Amen. And laid his mountains and heritage waste. There is poverty, isn't it? For the dragons of the wilderness. Notice he said, I gave it over to the dragon. Amen. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts in this rebellion. They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God has indignation with that flesh rising up and controlling. Now, look in Malachi chapter, I mean, um, Obadiah. Look in Obadiah. Obadiah. Thank you, Lord. Obadiah. Look at verse chapter 1. Chapter 1. My, I've got to get another Bible. Mine's all tore there. <laughs> How many of your Bibles wear out sometimes? Obadiah chapter 1. And look at verse 1. Obadiah 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard of a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, and thou, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, God said, Fence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. How many know God's going to bring pride down in this hour? Sure is. How many know the flesh man is prideful? Now look over in chapter 1 here in this verse, in this chapter. Chapter 1, I want to look at one other verse here now. Look in verse, look in verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness to the house, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them, devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of the flesh. And Savior shall come up on, and the word Savior means deliverer, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, the flesh, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. But I'll tell you, we'll not judge anybody till we judge ourselves. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, praise God. I'm not going to go into the rest of those names, but I want to take you on another teaching that I believe we need to look at here tonight. Turn with me now over to the book of Isaiah. I may believe the Lord's going to bring Satan down. Now, well, I'll tell you what, let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel 28 first. Let's change it here. Ezekiel 28. Now, we read a while ago in Ezekiel about the one sitting in the seat, didn't we? Now, in Ezekiel 28, look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. 28, 6. Now, what's the Scriptures? God's going to bring the devil down. I'm going to show you how he's going to bring him down. And he said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee. Now look at this. The terrible of the nation. I believe God's got some terrible ones coming forth. Strong ones in the Lord. Out of every nation. 
How many believe that? And they shall draw their swords, come on now, against the beauty of thy wisdom. And they shall defile thy brightness, and they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the depths of them, deaths of them and that are slain in the midst of the seas or humanity. Are you hearing that? So God said, I'm going to have some from the nations, the terrible of the nation. Glory to God. How many want to see that? How many want to be a part of that? Amen. Now turn to another scripture. Turn to uh, Ezekiel 29. Listen to what God says here. Ezekiel 29. And the Lord said in verse 2, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh. He's a picture of the devil. King of Egypt, king of the world. Lust the eye. Come on, lust the flesh and the pride of life. And prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Come on now. The great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which has said, My river is my own. I mean, know he's a big liar. And I have made it for myself. Now listen to verse 4. But I will put hooks in thy jaws. Hallelujah. God's going to hook him. Glory. And I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick to thy scales. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. And all the fish of thy rivers shall stick to thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness. Everybody hear that? Let's read it now. Hallelujah. Be in all the fish of thy rivers, and thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together, nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field, and to the fowls of the heaven. And notice, God said, I'm going to leave you thrown in the wilderness. Turn to Psalm 74. Feel anointing coming on me now. Hallelujah. I mean, oh, you start talking against the enemy, God rises up in you. Psalm 74, 13. Notice something here. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength, and thou breakest the heads of the dragons, come on, in the waters, and thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meek to the people inhabiting something. The wilderness. We saw that back there in Ezekiel, didn't we? Thank you, Jesus. Now turn to his... Ezekiel chapter uh, 32. Ezekiel chapter 32. And I want to show you something here in, in chapter 32. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 32. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Now, before you think this is already fulfilled, look down to verse 7 and 8 in just a minute. I want to show you it has a future meaning. And God said, and I will put, I shall put thee out. I will, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. And I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. And all the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. Amen. Now go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2. Son of man, take up a lamentation for who? He's the picture of Satan, king of Egypt. Notice, the king of Egypt, king of the world. And say to him, Thou art a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest the, their rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company, come on, of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Hallelujah. God's got a company that's going to put him in a net. Hallelujah. And that word net means a network. Hallelujah. And that word company means assembly, a congregation. Hallelujah. It means an assembly that's together. And God's going to have a people that's going to be together in this thing. Can you say amen? This word net or network means to occupy... By driving out previous tenants and possessing in their place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Enemies robbed us long enough. Amen. It means to expel, to cast out. 
and it means to come to poverty. But it also means this. It means in their land they shall possess the devil. Hallelujah. Double portion. I'm going to read that verse again. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Now look at verse 7. In verse 8, we read that. Though. I'm sorry, we read that. All right, verse 9. I will also vex the hearts of many people when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee when I shall brandish my sword. Brothers, sisters, God's got a sword in the land. Are you hearing me? Now notice, hold your place. Go to Isaiah chapter 27. The word is true, isn't it? Isaiah 27. And look at verse 1. And notice what he said. In that day, the day of the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. I think another one says the fleeing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked or twisted serpent. And he shall slay the dragon, come on, that's in the sea. How's he going to do it? By a sword. I mean, oh, we're becoming that word, too. He is the word. I mean, oh, he's got a treasure in what? Earth and vessels. Amen. Somebody said he put his treasure in crack pots. Well, maybe that's true. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want it in me, don't you? And I thank God for what I have. But he said he's got a sword that's going to destroy this serpent, this dragon, Leviathan, in the sea. That's what the Bible says. Now look in verse 6. He shall cause them that come up Jacob to take root. That's natural. That was, that's the natural. Israel, the church, shall blossom, they'll bud, and they'll fill the world with fruit. I mean, oh, God's waiting for some fruit to come forth. Come on, amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's go back to, the, to some scriptures. Turn, turn with me back to Ezekiel now, chapter 32. And notice what he said. God said, I'm going to brandish my sword here there before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, in verse 10, every man for his own life, in the day of thy what? Fall. Jesus said, I saw Satan, come on, fall from heaven as lightning. Now, why did he say that? Because they just come back with a good report. Lord, the demons are subject to us by and through your name. Come on, help me now. And I'll tell you, I don't know how much the devil weighs. You can put him on a scale. How many know every time you come against the works of the devil, you can put that on the other part of the scale? And you can work and work and seem like nothing's happening, but how many know sooner or later somebody's going to tip the scale? What am I saying? Deliverance, hear me now, in the church is going to bring Satan down. How many believe that? Glory. I believe that. But back here in chapter 32, he says something. In verse 11, For thus saith the Lord God, The sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. But notice, By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall, the terrible the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. But I want you to notice, it's the sword of the mighty. Now, before you think it's Babylon, you just go back and remember verse 7 and 8. There's a, there's a future meeting here. In verse 7 and 8, God said, I'm going to darken everything when I take care of that dragon. Hallelujah. Now, look at the mighty just a minute. Turn with me to, to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah 13. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 13. And I want to look at verse... I want to look at verses um, 2. No, 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones... I have also called my what? Mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. And God said, I'm calling for my sanctified ones. I'm calling for my mighty ones. I'm going to bring this battle to pass. Hallelujah. But I'm calling my warriors together. Can you say Amen. Now turn with me to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. And I want to look at another verse if I can find it here. Praise God. 
Joel chapter 3. Look in verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Gather yourselves together round about. Thither calls thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. You've got some mighty ones, brethren. Turn with me to Zechariah chapter 10. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost gave me this message last week. Zechariah 10. And you'll notice something. I won't go into all of it. There's so much to, this, about this horse company here. It's due to horse company. I think Jack preached it one time, didn't you, Jack? Hallelujah. Got a good gal. Jack's got a book back there. There's so much. I like to teach the whole chapter, but I want to I wanna see something. Look in verse. Look in verse 3. We'll start there. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds. And I will punish the goats, for the Lord of hosts hath, hath visited the flock of the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse. Notice, his goodly horse in the battle. And God reserved that horse company for the battle, the proverb says. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppression together. Verse 5, and they shall be as what? Mighty men which tread down. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Won't you? How many want to see that? Tread down your enemies in the mud, right in the mire. Glory to God. Oh, it's going to be beautiful to see the enemy's face right in the mud, isn't it? Hallelujah. Tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the, ba in the battle. Don't you think he's not going to give up easy? For they shall fight because the Lord is with them, the mighty ones. And the riders and horses shall be confounded. That's the other horse company. Now will strengthen the house of Judah and so forth. Well, it's all in there. God has his mighty ones, doesn't he? Hallelujah. Now go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation Chapter 12. Look in Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was a place found any more where? In heaven. I mean, long, long, as long as this dragon's in heaven, it's an impure heaven. But he's in that heaven, he's going to be cast out. And he's going to be cast out by Michael and his angels. But look down to verse 11. Somebody else is working too. And they overcame him. These are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. How many know the angels are going to be working in the, in the Spirit? And the, and the sons of God are going to be working in the Spirit. Amen? And the enemy is going to come down. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Look at verse 8 again now. And prevail not, neither was a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent. Notice that old serpent that takes you back to Genesis. Call the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Hallelujah. Then go up to Revelation 20. We see another scripture here, don't we? Amen. He said in Revelation 20, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain, come on, in his hand. In his hand. I mean, there's a hand ministry here. In his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, come on, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And then he'll be let, let out for a season, and then he'll be put into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Go to Psalms 149. Psalms 149. Thank you, Master. Psalms 149. I just want to read it. Praise ye the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise and the congregation sings. You can take this 149 and apply it to, to Revelation 14 if you'd really see it in the Spirit correctly. I mean, you know, there's a new song in Revelation 14. Hallelujah. And here he's saying, sing, sing to, the law, uh, to the Lord. And over there they're talking about the Lamb. How I many know oh, the Lord is the Lamb? Verse 2, let Israel rejoice in him that made him that the children of Zion. And I mean, oh, they come up on Mount Zion there with the sons of God in Revelation 14. He said, let the children of Zion be joyful where? In their king. Let them praise his name of the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Come on. And a two-edged sword in their hands. Not to kill each other, but to destroy the enemy. 
Come on, help me. <laughs> to execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishments upon the people, and to do something. Come on. To bind their king with chains. Who's going to do that? The people of God. And their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon the judgment written, This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Let's bind the enemy over us tonight. Amen. Let's take dominion over our own life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus that you're raising up, Lord, the terrible of the nation. You're raising up a company, a network, Lord. Lord, you're putting your hook in a jaw. You've got a big chain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bind the works of the enemy over our own lives, over our own families, Lord. We come against the enemy, Lord, and all this works in the name of Jesus over this place. And over every person here tonight, Lord, we come against the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you tonight for those overcomers, hallelujah, that will overcome him and bring him down. Lord God, raise them up and strengthen them tonight, we pray. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Come on, praise you tonight. Give him praise tonight. Give him praise tonight. Give him glory tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Master. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus tonight. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We praise you this night. Oh, Lord, we walk over the enemy, Lord. We trample him on our feet tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. We bring him down in our own lives. In the name of Jesus, we walk over him. We bring him down. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we speak victory to every soul tonight to rise up and bind the enemy, Lord, in their life and in their family. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come against the spirit that says, I'm a Jew when they're not a Jew. We come against the very throne of Satan himself, Lord. We come against the place where he dwells, and God, we ask you to cast him out and deliver thy people in the name of Jesus. We come against the depths of Satan tonight in the name of Jesus. We come against the doctrine of Jezebel and Athaliah that's among the people of God. We bind you in the name of Jesus, and we command you to loose the people of the living God in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray in the Spirit. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sila bra candele bra soda bra candele bra si cara bra haia. Sila bra candele bra corra sindele bra tia. Rindele bra siandele bra corre siandele bra haia. We breath bless you Lord. Sila bra candele bra candele bra caia. Rissandele bra coia andare bra sataia. Praise you God. Praise you God. Praise you Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, praise you, God. Father, I come against all infirmities in the bodies tonight. Lord God, every infirmity in the physical man, I command it to loose the bodies here tonight. Lord, I ask that the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus to flow among your people now. I ask that healing power, Lord, to go up and down these roads in the midst of your people and take away sickness and disease, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that healing virtue, the fire of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord, to heal and deliver your people tonight, Lord, from every sickness, from every disease, Lord, from any pain in the body. I command the pain to be released in the name of Jesus by the anointing and the power of the Son of God. And I thank you, my God. I praise you, my God. In the mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Pray to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.